Hi. So in this uh, fifth uh, video lecture about uh, data development analysis, uh, I'll take a opportunity to briefly discuss the prehistory of DEA, particularly in uh, economics. So this is an um, optional part of the of the course uh, uh, for those who are interested in the historical development of, of DEA. And uh, I believe that this can be of interest to, to those who are really, um, really interested in the subject area and want to develop very, very thorough uh, understanding of the topic. Uh, uh, however, it is not strictly necessary to be able to apply DEA or, or other techniques considered in the course. And also my approach will be based on, on very much on the, on the books and journal articles uh, in this so so the notation can be a little bit more cryptic than in my my slides usually so apologies for that so firstly about uh, about dea so uh, so uh, data envelopment analysis as i have already a couple of times uh, mentioned uh, it is considered as a very uh, fundamentally important innovation in the literature of uh, operational research and management science and uh, nowadays also also uh, economists tend to see DEA as a, as a OR development uh, so um, there has been a lot of uh, papers and books written about the historical development of DEA after the Charles Cooper and Rhodes and uh, so therefore in this course I do not really go to this uh, this kind of uh, uh, papers. Here is, for example, one uh, one kind of uh, from the historical perspective of the citation-based literature survey of the of the DEA. But there are several other surveys of the of the DEA literature. And typically, all of these uh, these uh, historical treatments of DEA they take uh, Charles Cooper and Rhodes' 1978 article as the starting point and start the history from there. So. If you comp compare this uh, uh, for the for the for example to the Bible, then uh, in some sense the history of DEA is like a, like a New Testament, and in this uh, this lecture I will try to consider the the, um, the Old Testament, what happened before John Cooper and Rhodes, and interestingly, I think it turns out that there are several developments that are nowadays uh, reinvented in the under the label of DEA which were already known in economics several decades before. So uh, to, to briefly summarize, I, I, I will cover uh, so-called activity analysis uh, in economics. The term was, uh, was uh, coined by Charlie Koopmans, the Nobel Prize winning economist in the uh, early 1950s. Uh, I have also in the previous lectures already referred to this Michael Farrell seminar paper, the measurement of productive efficiency. Uh, I will not consider in, in uh, my lecture very much the, the Shepard's book, Theory of Cost and Production Functions, but I want to note at this point that, uh, that Shepard was already uh, applying this kind of uh, activity analysis, which later became, uh, became known as DEA, and he, he made some uh, seminal contributions to the, particularly to the theory of production, which is still nowadays uh, being discussed and developed under the label of, of DEA. So Shepard already uh, laid the framework for this uh, production theory. And also, also he was applying similar techniques that would be nowadays called DEA. But perhaps the most um, Forgotten contribution in this uh, this uh, respect is Sidney Afriat's paper titled "Efficiency Estimation of Production Functions," and uh, I want to clarify some of the contributions of Afriat that that preceded uh, Charles Cooper and Rhodes by several years and anticipated several developments in DEA in the in the later later decades. Actually, if I if you want to go to the really roots of the of the axiomatic approach in economics and the idea of uh, uh, of forming uh, form the the benchmark technology as a linear combination of observed activities, then 
it's good to mention this um, uh, John von Neumann's uh, study, which was originally published in German in 1938, and after the Second World War, it appeared uh, in, as an article in Review of Economic Economics uh, Economic Studies (RE Studies). And uh, in this model, John von Neumann considers the he, he models the the entire economy. So it's not in the setting of of some kind of uh, uh, performance uh, assessment or efficiency analysis as such, but to model the, the production of the entire economy, von Neumann uses this idea that, uh, that uh, there is certain finite number of processes which he, which he indicates by capital P, and then he obtains the total production as a, as a linear combination of those processes. So he uses intensities uh, he denotes them by x, but but uh, these intensities are exactly the same as we have this intensity weights lambda in the DEA literature. So I think it is uh, it is quite clear this uh, analog uh, of of forming the the technology as the linear combination of uh, some some uh, finite number of uh, activities. Uh, he also uh, discusses so called the coefficient of expansion, which can be thought of as the output-oriented uh, efficiency measure. That it's in a different context, but, but clearly the analog is quite clear, the coefficient of expansion. And he also considers prices and quantities, and he understands the, the duality between prices and quantities, as the following uh, equations, for example, demonstrate. So uh, you can think about this uh, von Neumann's uh, uh, concept as, as some kind of elementary efficiency index that he considers both from the primal and the dual perspective. Now I apologize that the notations are of course completely different than in the in the modern modern uh, DEA literature, but if you carefully compare it, uh, it clearly indicates this kind of uh, like uh, he talks about the greatest purely technical possible factor of expansion of the whole economy, uh, which is Clearly, just uh, just uh, some some sort of efficiency index, which he takes as a uh, computes using the linear combination of of some finite set of observed activities. So, um, moving on to the to the seminal contribution of Charles Koopmans. So here's a Dutch uh, Nobel Prize winning economist, uh, very influential at his time. So Koopmans takes this idea of using the, the linear combination of activities even, even further. So in this formula 1.5, you can see that he writes uh, uh, output Y as the linear combination of, uh, of activities, and these activities he's, he's denoted by this uh, technology matrix A. So Koopmans is, uh, is uh, quite widely cited in the efficiency analysis literature for the for the definition of the uh, of the technical efficiency, but uh, if you think about also this uh, figure number seven that uh, that uh, that I have reproduced here, so you could easily interpret that as a as a DEA frontier in the three dimensional space. It's amazing that he 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 used already such kind of three dimensional diagrams at that time, which are still relatively rarely used in the in the DEA literature. Um, another Nobel Prize winning uh, economist, uh, Gerard de Bruyne, is also frequently cited uh, for the for the uh, introducing the definition of the uh, of the efficiency. Some some authors refer to the de Bruyne Farrell uh, efficiency. I have here taken an illustration of how De Bruyne defines his uh, coefficient of resource utilization, which is indeed uh, uh, a certain type of uh, the efficiency measure. So definitely coefficient of resource utilization is a measure of uh, efficiency. There's no doubt about that. And uh, this equation also uh, demonstrates that, uh, that De Bruyne well understood the, the duality. So he's using this uh, uh, minimax uh, equal max mean formulation, so duality between prices and quantities. 
However, one point to note in this uh, this Debra's um, paper is that uh, that this is also phrased in the context of the general equilibrium, similar to the to the um, von Neumann's contribution that I mentioned before. Also, one point to note here that uh, that this um, these quantities quantities are are actually taken as um, net uh, i believe it was net inputs in his case so so it includes both inputs and outputs so it is not this kind of input oriented or output oriented uh, uh, measure that uh, that uh, de Bro is using in fact it would be more like uh, like some kind of a profit efficiency measure that has the has the both uh, inputs and outputs included and if the if the uh, if the outputs are with the negative side so in some sense it would be like uh, like uh, uh, cost-based measure. So now we are ready to come to this uh, Michael Farrell's uh, important uh, contribution from 1957, and uh, Farrell's paper is perhaps the first uh, uh, that operates in the in the more micro level of um, of uh, uh, of units. I think his uh, empirical application had uh, uh, state level data for US agriculture but anyway he's uh, he's much more focused on this kind of um, uh, improving efficiency at the at the micro level and uh, there are several points I want to want to mention on this these diagrams so let's start from the from the left hand side the diagram number 1 and uh, Notice that uh, that this axis labeled as X and Y, they refer to two separate inputs. So Y is not output, but it's another input. And uh, Farrell defines this uh, notion of uh, technical efficiency or measure of efficiency as this kind of radial measure, like distance from the origin. And uh, so the idea would be that uh, in this um, theoretical case, uh, the frontier is characterized by the isoquant indicated by this curved curved line S and S prime. So that indicates the uh, minimum minimum uh, possible input combinations that can produce some given amount of output. Uh, letter P indicates then the evaluated unit. So the distance to the if if you then start to contract the input vector towards the origin then eventually we hit the point Q on the frontier. So uh, the Farrell's uh, definition of the, of the input uh, efficiency measure would be to measure the distance from origin to point Q. So, so this length of uh, line OQ to the length of line segment OP. So this ratio OQ to OP would be the measure of technical efficiency as indicated on this slide. And this is in fact this uh, input-oriented technical efficiency that is still commonly used in the, in the DEA literature. Uh, in addition, Farrell also introduces the so-called allocative efficiency. In his paper, he talks about price efficiency, but uh, nowadays it's more commonly referred to as allocative efficiency. So suppose that we know the, the relative prices of inputs X and Y. So in this diagram one, this line A, A prime indicates the isocost line. So all points on this line A, A prime uh, are, have the same cost, same total cost. So the diagram illustrates then that the cost minimizing uh, input vector would be this uh, Q prime that minimizes the cost and it's still technically feasible. But uh, the Farrell's insight is to measure cost efficiency, the overall cost efficiency then relative to the ISO cost line. So he also introduces this point R on the ISO cost line, which is not really technically feasible. It is outside the production possibility set. It's below the, the input ISO quant. However, this point R is also equally costly. So therefore, this kind of overall cost efficiency could be measured as the ratio of OE or R divided by OP. And this also then gives this kind of very intuitive and, uh, 
and uh, helpful decomposition of the overall cost efficiency to the components of pure techni technical efficiency, which was this OQ to OP. And uh, we have also the allocative efficiency component, which is the, the ratio of OR to OQ using these original symbols of Farrell. So that means that we can, we can have this, uh, this ratio of the uh, minimum cost of producing the given output to the actual cost of the firm and we can break it down to the two components. So, so it would be possible to decrease, uh, uh, decrease cost by improving technical efficiency and that would leave, uh, lead us from uh, point P to the frontier point Q. But uh, in order to fully minimize cost, we would then have to move along the I sequent from the point Q to the Q prime. So that would be this kind of non-radial movement along the isoquant, but the same cost uh, effect that uh, we can measure the impact on the total cost by this ratio uh, OR to OQ. So that is the measure of uh, allocative efficiency. So that is useful to, to, to know. We will later find similar kind of, kind of decompositions uh, later on. It's also important to note that Farrell did not just restrict to this kind of conceptual definition of efficiency and decomposing it to the technical and allocative efficiency part, but Farrell also did consider empirical estimation from the, from the data. And this is clearly illustrated by diagram number two. So if you can compare this kind of piecewise linear frontier to the usual, usual kind of DEA, uh, this is exactly what the DEA input isoquant would look like. So if you have some given observations, we envelop all the observations uh, uh, using some, uh, uh, some technology that satisfies free disposability, convexity, and potentially constant returns to scale. So the comparison of these original diagrams of, from Farrell's paper also clearly illustrates that uh, Farrell well understood this idea that uh, there is some true technology illustrated in diagram one, and then there is some kind of empirical approximation or, or estimation going on from data, which is illustrated in number two. So for example, the true technology might well be a smooth function, like the smooth input isoquant S, S prime, but then uh, we can approximate it using this kind of piecewise linear technology indicated in diagram two. And this is something that is still causing confusion in the DEA literature, that there is not a clear distinction between the true technology and the estimator. So now I jump forward to Sidney Afriad's work from 1972. So this is one of the most misunderstood papers in, the, in this, uh, this uh, domain. Firstly, I want to highlight that, uh, that Afriat's paper was, uh, was published in a very good journal, International Economic Review, which is not like some kind of uh, uh, marginal journal in any way. And Afriat is, is, uh, is in economics, he's famous for the uh, Afriat theorem in, in microeconomics, which is often, often imposed in the, in the um, consumer theory. But he utilized the same kind of approach in the production side in his paper titled Efficiency Estimation of Production Functions. So this is also good to mention that the title Efficiency Estimation, so, so it was directly trying to do the same things as DEA is doing. It was not something, something like, like just testing hypotheses or something. It is about efficiency estimation, as the title clearly states. So Afriat states this kind of um, assumptions for the production function f and um, I want to state here that uh, that uh, Afriat operates in this paper fully in the in the context of single output uh, production function so one clear difference to the later developments is DEA he doesn't uh, use the production possibility set but the production function um, Afriat suggests in his uh, introduction that the approach would uh, easily generalize to the multiple output setting but uh, this is not actually done in his uh, his paper so we don't know how easily it would, would go, but, but later in, from DEA literature, we, we, we can of course see that how, how it can be done. So 
So Afriat considers three three sets of axioms for the for the production possibilities that as indicated here in the in the in the slide. Sorry, not for the production possibility set, but pro for the production function. Um, first axiom P1 is that the production function is, is non-decreasing, and he even uses the term free disposal of input. Uh, this axiom later became known uh, in, the, in the literature with this uh, uh, free disposable hull technology. So uh, I mentioned already here that Afriat already characterized this free disposable hull technology in the single output case in his 1972 paper. The second axiom, uh, what he calls classical, states that the production function is non-decreasing and concave. So this would be the variable returns to scale case. And interestingly, this is also the uh, production function that uh, Rajiv Banker later used for proving statistical consistency of the DEA estimator. So Afriat already introduced that uh, more than uh, 10 years before, uh, before it was known in the DEA literature. And finally, the third set of axioms is that production function is non-decreasing, concave, and conical. So that's this constant returns to scale, CRS case. And what is remarkable, I think, is that Afriat formally proves the minimum extrapolation theorems for all three cases in the single output setting. I don't go through all of these minimum extrapolation theorems in detail, I just take one of them on the next slide. So this is for the variable returns to scale, perhaps the most commonly used uh, uh, production function in the, in the DEA literature. So consider this production function capital F of X. And if you compare this one to the, to the production function used by Rajiv Banker to prove the statistical consistency of the DEA estimator, it's easy to verify that this Afriad's production function is completely identical. Um, sometimes it is suggested that, uh, that Afriat used so cryptical notation that it was impossible to read. But if you, if you look at this uh, f of x, uh, the notation is even exactly the same. Uh, he uses the lambda for the intensity weights. So this lambda here is exactly the same lambda that uh, the DEA literature is using for the intensity weights all the time. It's very easy to see that this is exactly the same same technology. Um, it is true that uh, that uh, these minimum extrapolation theorems are not really uh, stated in the most uh, most clear fashion. So here is the the theorem one point two that is proving the the um, uh, or, or stating the minimum extrapolation result for the variable returns to scale. So Afriat states that for any given data, this uh, function capital F, which is this D8 type uh, uh, piecewise linear technology. So he's stating that this, uh, this, this production function F is non-decreasing concave and such that uh, uh, any output Y is less than or equal to the production function. So it means that this uh, capital F envelops all the data points. And uh, he, in the final statement, he's saying that in any case, it's capital F of X is everywhere, not greater than any other non-decreasing concave function F that envelops the, the data. So that is the minimum extrapolation result, that this capital F of X is uh, the smallest technology to contain all the observed data points and satisfy those stated axioms. It's exactly the same idea that has been later, later proved in uh, Banker, Chance and Cooper's uh, famous uh, management science article for uh, variable returns to scale technology. But that's not all. There is also, also Afriat uh, considers also the statistical inferences or, or anticipates them. So on this slide, uh, he is trying to capture the intuition for, the, for this kind of uh, kind of inferences. Uh, I do not read everything, you, you, can, you can read it yourself, but um, I find this kind of idea that you would have a sample from a population and, and in this case, it's the simplest thinkable case of a single output only. 
So you would, uh, you would uh, run 100 yards and, and record the speed. So there's single output, the average speed, there's no inputs because every, every runner runs the same distance. And then based on this uh, sample, you would try to infer where is the frontier, what is the maximum possible speed. And in fact, uh, Afriat's paper is surprisingly often cited in the stochastic frontier analysis for the, for the contribution of introducing the gamma distribution for the, for the inefficiency. But interestingly, this, uh, this axiomatic uh, developments are, are more or less ignored. Um, I also want to point out that, uh, that uh, Afriat developed several also economic measures, for example, cost function using the, the DEA technology, which is later has been also used in the DEA literature by other people. There's also profit function. There's also parametric programming approach with Cobb Douglas technology and so on and so on. So this is really a fascinating paper to read that how many developments in the DEA literature Afria could already anticipate uh, some uh, uh, 10 years before DEA became popular. So as the next topic, uh, we will then move on to the classical econometric approach, stochastic frontier analysis that builds heavily on, on uh, regression analysis. Thanks.